Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am joined from by Gil Cargill, who is up in Marina del Rey, just up the coast in an equally sunny part of Los Angeles. How are you doing, Gil? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Excellent. And Gil brings 48 years of sales coaching experience to his client. He has been and is still a leader in the field of applying technology to the sales process. He's worked with over 7,000 businesses and created a track record of boosting sales by 36%, which is no mean feat. If anybody's been in sales, they'll know that that's, uh, that's very impressive. And what we're going to talk today about is using generative AI to boost sales and profits. So, um, Gil, given the length of your experience, and you've seen different, you know, you've seen different technologies come. You've seen different initiatives, shiny new. You've seen every shiny new toy in the book. What makes generative AI different? Well, there's one major difference. All of the other technology that I've seen, and this goes back to the DOS days, even before ACT was a uh, mm -hmm. viable product. Uh, all of the other technologies remind salespeople to do something. They don't do the work for them. Now, with generative AI, you can have a uh, bot, is what I refer to, or sales Android, that will call and confirm appointments that were set by the customers. Uh, we use generative AI to read the responses that our prospects, our clients' prospects, uh, send back after a cold email outreach. So AI can actually read those documents and it will interpret the meaning of the customer. For instance, if the customer says, send me some information, AI will send the information. If the customer says, leave me alone, AI will terminate the conversation and put that customer into a do not call folder, do not contact. Or if the customer uh, has interest, AI knows enough to ask the customer for an appointment. And then once the appointment is completed, AI will step in via text or email or phone call to your employees and ask your employees what would they like this software to do with that prospect as a next step. Uh, I candidly feel that we are barely scratching the surface mm -hmm. of what AI can do for sales teams. And so with, with these tools now, obviously, it, it definitely enhances the quality of the outreach and the contact. What, what benefit does it have for the salesperson apart from it doing all of these things for them, but in terms of allowing them or elevating them to be able to focus on the, the things that humans do best? That's a great uh, question. Uh, I've, uh, I like to joke and say that I've trained thousands and thousands of salespeople over the past 48 years. And so far, only two people have said they thoroughly enjoyed cold calling. <laughs> and I checked further and found that their meds had worn out. So uh, we don't uh, look at cold calling as a good investment of time. It is necessary. AI can eliminate the responsibility of cold calling. And AI, I just talked to a, a company this morning that is using AI and they get about two appointments per day per sales rep out of AI processes and procedures. Now they don't use AI for pure cold calling mm -hmm. because that is a violation of FCC yeah. uh, regulations, but they do use it as I was describing to read responses, select issues. And another uh, application is prospecting via text messaging with AI reading the responses once again. And that's extraordinarily useful in an inbound mode. Mm -hmm. So uh, for instance, one of our clients is a caterer. We set up a bot to respond to inbound inquiries. It can price your menu. It can put together various uh, dishes, fish, beans, or whatever. It can put together a budget and take the deal all the way to closing without talking to one of your salespeople. So we give back to the sales force a huge amount of time. Some of my studies have shown that the average salesperson spends 34% of his or her day searching for someone to sell to, <laughs> AKA prospecting. Yep. 
if you filled the funnel with leads that were the outcome of AI activity, then you could spend that 34% of the day with qualified, interested, and nurtured clients. And that's how revenue goes up. That's how morale goes up and uh, attitude on everybody's part. Yeah. Do you do you think that as long as as long as buyers are getting served in in a way that suits them and they're getting the information and it's being and it's elegant, do you think going forward buyers are going to care that much how, whether it's AI or whether it's not? I I perceive that there's some initial resistance uh, because some of the first AI systems were pretty robotic. I guess would be the appropriate yeah. word. And the FCC in response to a deluge of robocalls and AI calls banned this activity. So I think moving forward, it will be very good. If for instance, you were interested in getting a catering and encountered our inbound version of AI, I don't think you would know that you were talking to a computer because mm -hmm. it's all done through text and the system responds very cordial we train each bot to be professional and it knows everything there is to know about the client system so for inbound traffic it is beyond fantastic for outbound if you integrate it with email as i said earlier it will produce and, and this is the major uh, metric it creates and manages operative word manages thousands and thousands of prospects for each sales rep so what would happen to the revenue of a five or a 10 person team? Were they able to get in touch and stay in touch with 10, 15, 20,000 right. prospects per sales rep? That's the home run. Yeah, no, for sure. And so in many ways, this also means that the salesperson themselves in some ways needs to elevate their game because yes, they're gonna have a lot more time. Yes, it's a lot more focused. But I guess they're also out of excuses, right? So um, <laughs> they're going to have to elevate their game a wee bit. Yeah, well, one of the things that I promise when I help a client set up a uh, series of bots is they will never get a lame excuse from a generative AI-driven system. <laughs> it, will, it will never show up drunk or late for work, <laughs> and it will never give you a lame excuse or tell you that your prices are too high. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, I, I think, are gone. So you're right, the salesperson in the AI environment uh, has to level up because the system will produce more leads. And the system has an automated follow-up capability built into it and automated reports. So there really is no place in the environment for the salesperson to provide excuses. Now, granted, we win deals and we lose deals. Sure. But if you aren't making the calls, then you're going to underperform. So what do you think is what do you think are some of the maybe underrated skills or maybe less uh, focused on skills that salespeople now need to to really kind of practice and make sure that they they're at a high level at? The, I'd say the most underrated skill is learning how to create and maintain trust with a stranger very quickly. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, the systems will feed leads, the funnel's constantly being filled. If you call that prospect and you are inattentive or rude, or you, know, uh, you don't have valuable statements, you'll be turned off very quickly. So I get calls from vendors who are trying to sell us products and software and services and what have you. And I'm shocked at how poorly salespeople are trained, at least the ones that are calling me, to uh, get me interested in their product. It's, it's amazing to me. But uh, management's paying them to lose sales. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way, a good way of, of putting it. So where do you see where do you see this going? I mean, as you said, we're only kind of scratching the surface right now, and maybe some of the 
uh, initial iterations of AI were a little clumsy, but now they're fast becoming, you know, they're rapidly becoming uh, more elegant as they go forward. In fact, I'll I tell you one thing, Gil, I said this to somebody the other day is, I've never seen a situation where I adopt an AI tool and three weeks later, I adopt a different one because it's there's a better you know, version of what I'm using. This 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 has never happened before. You're living the same life I'm living. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm. I think I'm on my fourth or fifth uh, <laughs> generative AI tool because each one's better, faster, more uh, compatible with my clients' needs uh, than the one that I signed up for two weeks ago. Uh, so the speed of change is amazing, and I'm here to tell you. If a company wants to adhere to the old school methods of dialing for dollars or going door to door, they are on the verge of becoming extinct because it ain't going to work anymore. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. And and um, and like I'm saying, do you see where 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 do you see this going? Because these, as you said, with the the rapid development of these tools. And where would you like it to go? Where do you think it could play the best role for sales? Well, uh, clearly prospecting is number one, get, uh, fill the funnel and keep it full. Mm -hmm. But proposal generation in some complex sales, uh, you need to really understand all of the relationships and the interpersonal activity within the decision makers and the influencers. And AI can parse through that pretty quickly and pretty easily. Uh, developing list, uh, AI can help you develop a very strong list uh, very quickly. Uh, I, campaigns, uh, I uh, recently on uh, ChatGPT, I said I need 12 marketing letters to go out once a month. And uh, about eight minutes later, I had 12 well-written letters uh, ready to be printed. Uh, huge time savings, huge time savings. Mm -hmm. and that enhances the prospect's perception of my professionalism. Right. I, I think we aren't even close to scratching the surface on what AI video can do for sales. How about uh, presentations that look like they were done in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. They were done in your spare bedroom. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, using uh, all of these tools to facilitate interactions with prospects? So. Uh, I'm I'm more excited about sales today than I've ever been, and I'm looking forward to what will be released next week. And I'm not exaggerating when I say next week. No, and absolutely, and and it was it was interesting though. You did focus on the trust issue, right? And I think that it that is where that is where it's going to become even more critical for the human salesperson um, you know, to be able to build that. But also, if you're going to use these AI tools, and as you said, I agree, there, there's going to be 20 next week and 30 the following week, uh, you also need to look at your internal structures and processes and to make sure that you can integrate this properly. Because I think uh, sales is often a place where process you know, has been a, sometimes a dirty word, even though it shouldn't be. Right. Uh, and now in order to make sure that you get the best out of these, you have to have well-defined well structures and processes. Completely agree. And uh... I have uh, a nickname for a problem that I've seen in hundreds of companies, specifically the sales prevention department. Mm -hmm. So if you have a sales prevention department, what I mean by that is undertrained or incompetent sales support people. Uh, for instance, when I sold for IBM 150 years ago, the uh, uh, we had a data entry person that all of the salespeople nicknamed the queen of camp because <laughs> she couldn't enter an order. So if I had a customer that ordered five machines, she would ship 15. Uh, and guess who had to spend time correcting that error? Mm -hmm. Guess who looked foolish in the eyes yeah. of the customer? So uh, if you're going to drive more business into the top of the funnel, you better have a facility to process that business as it comes through. Otherwise, you're pretty much going to create conflict internally, and you're going to drive your salespeople crazy, and they will leave and go somewhere else.
Yeah, for sure. And the other part of this too is this uh, is is the use of automation and and being able to automate as many things as possible, especially you know routine and repetitive tasks and all of that again to help people focus on high value activities. Uh, but again, but again, a lot of people have been slow to adopt uh, automation, even because again, it comes back to you can either you know, if you have bad processes and you automate them, you just get automated bad processes. So you do need to go through a a, a uh, an initiative to make sure that your processes are as efficient as possible, and then leverage automation as well as AI. Yeah, the uh, uh, I forget the data, but it was a very, very high percent of CRM implementations were judged by the VPs of those companies to underperform. And I believe that's because we neglected the salespeople as we were implementing the technology. Mm -hmm. So you could have the strongest uh, technology, the best technology stack on the planet, but if your salespeople weren't involved in the planning of that, then uh, chances are there will be some pushback. Also, make sure that the team understands the value that the technology will provide them. Because at the end of the day, even if they are good, loyal employees, when you ask an adult to change, mm -hmm. the very first thing that flashes in their mind is, what's in it for me? Yeah. Why should I go through this process? And, re and remember, properly implemented, AI does the work for the salesperson. So we have to be champions. We management or business owners have to be champions of the technology that we're implementing and roll it out properly. Get the team involved, let them know what they can expect. And in the very early days, you're gonna have some hiccups, but don't let your team sabotage the implementation. I've seen that happen yeah. all too often. Absolutely, and just uh, and just finally, Gil, as you're working with the with the the companies and the clients that you advise, what what are there any different characteristics or the profile of a salesperson going forward, or things that you're going to start looking for that perhaps you put less emphasis on in the past? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to look for less technology skills in most salespeople. I have to say most because it will vary based on industry. Sure. But the most important skill trait or behavior is the ability to rapidly create relationships based on trust. You see, I believe that the majority of the first contacts that you have with a demographically qualified prospect won't turn into a sale in your normal sales cycle. Data shows that three or 4% are ready to buy. 96% are what I call future buyers. They have to go into a system so that they're systematically reminded of the value proposition that the company has. This is a beautiful application for artificial intelligence because it gets done without increasing the salesman's workload. I believe that the average business to business salesperson finds it challenging to manage more than 30 to maybe 50 opportunities at any given time because you've got to juggle so many yeah. balls. With an automated follow-up program from an AI system, you can manage thousands of opportunities simultaneously. That's the secret sauce. Fill the funnel more rapidly and fill it with a higher volume and you're going to get more business out of the bottom of the funnel. Yeah, and of course, then then the other part, the other little wrinkle in all of this is you you have to build that trust often virtually and yeah. remote, not in a way, not being able to press the flesh like you used to be able to. So again, that 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 has its own uh, has its own challenges. Well, um, Gil, all of Gil's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay, for the past forty eight years, I've worked as a sales coach, consultant, and trainer. And most recently, I invested a lot of uh, our dollars into creating a sales autopilot. Uh, the brand name is salesautopilot.net. Uh, feel free to go to that website. And if you're curious about artificial intelligence systems at salesautopilot.net, we've got two test drives set up that you can take. One for an inbound call 
and one for outbound. So uh, look forward to answering, answering any questions anybody has and uh, wish you all good. I appreciate you uh, getting me on, John. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said, all the information will be below and I would uh, go check it out. As, uh, as I said, Gil has uh, so much experience and uh, the great thing about experience, but also future looking and, ad and adapting to the latest technologies too. So there's the perfect combination of experience and being future focused. So thanks again, Gil. Thank, Thank you, you for watching and listening and I'll see you all again soon. Thank Have you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.